Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. I would like to demonstrate the mixing of dental model plaster and also the effect of liquid powder ratio on the consistency of this particular material. In addition, I would like to show two other materials of the same general type, material called dental stone and improved dental stone. Essentially, model plaster is calcium sulfate hemihydrate. This is mixed with water and the hydration reaction continues and the formation of calcium sulfate dihydrate occurs. As this reaction continues, the material sets to a hard mass. This material is one of the fundamental materials that you will be using in your dental laboratory practice. What we'd like to do this morning is to demonstrate a mix of model plaster. We'll be using 50 grams of powder and approximately 27 milliliters of water. This is approximately the ratio that you will be using for your consistency in the laboratory. We essentially will start out by pouring the water into a mixing bowl and we will carry out a hand spatulation procedure. We will mix this material for one minute at which time we will place it in a metal ring, allow it to stand for one minute more, and at the two minutes from the start of the mix, we will remove the ring, and we will get an idea of the consistency by the slump of the material as the ring is removed. Well, we will mix this pre-weighed 50 grams of model plaster, and we pour it into the water. This is done to avoid trapping air in the material rather than doing the reverse procedure of pouring the water into the powder. We'll start the stopwatch and we will mix this material. First of all, we'll simply just try to wet the powder with water so that the powder will not fly around the room. And then as the material is completely wetted, we will then continue our mixing. In hand mixing, we'll mix at about three revolutions per second, and we'll mix for the full minute. This should give us a good, creamy, smooth consistency mix of model plaster. We do not beat the material uh, like you would beat an egg. We simply strop it against the side of the bowl. This minimizes the incorporation of air uh, during the mixing of the material, and still gives us thorough mixing of the powder and liquid. We're nearing the completion of the mixing time, and we will now take some of this material and pour it into the small metal ring that we have. We will vibrate this slightly. This will tend to remove the air bubbles. I'll try to remove some of this excess material around the base. And now we'll remove the the ring from the material, and you can see that the material slumps slightly, and uh, it does not retain the exact shape of the uh, ring that we had. One interesting feature is you can see the consistency is a function of the vibration, because if I turn on the vibrator just slightly, you can see how the material will continue to slump. 
So it's important in the pouring a model impression or model plaster or model impression material into an impression that vibration should be used because it improves the fluidity of the material uh, during the pouring stage. Now we have mixed several other uh, mixes of plaster with different liquid powder ratios. We'd like to show you these. This particular mix um, with this slump test was mixed at 63 milliliters of water per 100 grams of powder. The second one was mixed with 55 milliliters of water, then 50 milliliters of water, and finally 42 milliliters of water for 100 grams of model plaster. So that you can see that uh, the consistency of these mixes is very thin to very thick. What we need, of course, is an optimum consistency, something that we can pour. This material would be too thick and would not uh, flow readily into an impression. This material would be too thin and would be mechanically weak compared to uh, the optimum consistency, which would be in the range of 50 to 55, which would be represented by these two materials. Now I'd like to show you two other samples of products that are similar to model plaster. This yellow material is regular dental stone and it can come in several colors but a common color is yellow and improved dental stone which may come in shades of green or, or pink as this particular material is. These are essentially the same chemical as model plaster. However, it's been manufactured in a different way so that the powder particles of the initial material are much more regular and much larger in shape. As a result of this, we can use different amounts of water with these two materials. For example, as you recall, we used essentially 50 to 50 milliliters of water for 100 grams of the model plaster. We now can go with stone and we can use 100 grams of, of stone and mix it with only 30 milliliters of water. On the other hand, 22 to 24 milliliters of water is used to mix with 100 grams of improved dental stone. This means that we of course are increasing the strength as we go from model plaster to stone to improve stone. Now the question might come up then, well if the improved stone is that much stronger and we still can get the consistency we would like to have, why not use improved stone then in the laboratory? Principal reason is cost. The price of these materials increases as we go from regular model plaster to dental stone to improved stone. So that generally these materials are used, or the model plaster is used where we would use rather large quantities of material. And improved dental stone would be used only where we use rather small quantities and the high strength of this material would be its main advantage. So that we can see then we have a variety of products that we can use for models and dye materials. Now in the dental laboratory, you people will not be using a hand spatulation system. You will be using a mechanical spatulator similar to the one that we have here. This consists of a blade which rotates by placing the slot into the mechanical uh, mixer. The mechanical mixers in the laboratory operate at 1700 RPM. As a result, you will mix your materials only 20 seconds rather than the one minute as we have used in the hand spatulation. One precaution you should take is after placing the water in the mixing bowl followed by the plaster, you should wet the powder by taking your spatula and simply mixing the material sufficiently so that you get all of the powder wetted by the liquid. Then you can place the blade into the mechanical mixer, clamp it together by hand and put it in the mechanical mixer. It has one additional feature 
and that this hole can be attached um, to a vacuum system. This can be done by a metal coupling and a plastic uh, tubing, which then allows you to carry out your mixing procedures under a vacuum. I think you can see the improvement in the, uh, and the minimization of the amount of bubbles or voids in a mix carried out under vacuum. So this would be the system that you people will be using in the dental laboratory. Now as far as the setting time of these materials, the manufacturer really can control it uh, to his particular desire. The general trend, however, is to have dental plaster have a longer setting time than improved dental stone. This is usually based on the fact that you usually require more time for the operation in the laboratory with pouring rather large amounts of model plaster as opposed to pouring rather small amounts of improved stone. The model plaster frequently will have an initial setting time which is indicated by the loss of the glossy surface on the material during setting of approximately 13 minutes. The final setting time as indicated usually by a needle of this type which can be placed on the surface of the model plaster and after 10 seconds if it's removed and there's no indentation placed on the sample you will say that the material has completely set. So this would be approximately 30 minutes for model plaster. For improved stone and regular stone frequently the initial setting time will be in the order of 10 minutes and the final setting times will be in the order of 15 to 16 minutes. So considerably shorter times will be expected for those two materials. Now to summarize this, what we are trying to accomplish is to mix regular model plaster at the optimum consistency because we can see that liquid powder ratio controls consistency and in a sense consistency controls the mechanical strength of these materials. We would like to obtain optimum compressive strengths and mechanical properties of these materials. However, we cannot mix them at liquid powder ratios that are so stiff that we cannot use them and cannot pour the materials into the molds that we wish to use. So we are kind of compromised between liquid powder ratio essentially then and the mechanical strength of the material. For model plaster then, this means that 50 to 55 milliliters of water will give us reasonable amount of flow, particularly when we use vibration, and it will give us reasonable amount of strength for carrying out uh, this particular application. If we need additional strength, then we would of necessity go to either improved stone or to regular stone. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.